Hi everyone, I'm Dr. Russell Nudson. And I'm Dr. Vikram Jayaprakash. Welcome to this episode of The Hair Loss Show, where today we're going to deal with the specific patient question of hair loss in braided or hair shedding in braided hair. Welcome to The Hair Loss Show. Dr. Russell Nudson and Dr. Vikram Jayaprakash discuss issues relating to hair loss and the medical and surgical treatment of hair loss in both men and women. All right, so thanks again for watching. Uh, we got this question through uh, one of the comments on one of the videos, and I thought this would be a great uh, topic, topic to discuss because this is, is a great question, but we get asked this question a lot in, in clinic. So thank you to the person that uh, sent this through a couple of days ago. Uh, and the question is, I get my hair braided a lot. I leave it like that for about a week without washing it. And then when I take the braids out and shower, I swear like a 500 hairs, come out and I panic. And I think that's the, the uh, critical point there, right. is that the, the person is panicking, seeing uh, this number of hairs coming out. So the question is, should this patient panic? Right, so, so let's answer a couple of things. Firstly, hair shedding is normal, and people don't really pay attention to it until they start to worry. Uh, about hair loss, for example, and then all of a sudden they start to count and they start to really pay attention to it. And when hair comes to the end of its growth cycle, as every hair is on a cycle on your body controlled by your genes, the hair detaches from the skin and waits for something to tug it out, which is typically washing or brushing. So time and time again, I have patients come in to me, uh, particularly women, who say, oh, I noticed this increase in shedding and uh, it was happening when I was washing my hair, so I reduced the frequency of washing the hair mm -hmm. and even more came out. And I said to them, well, if you think about it, you've just saved up a few days worth of hair loss. Yes. Now, if you think about this specific um, patient, uh, person, what's happened here is that he's got all his hair tied up and some of the hairs over time are detaching from the skin, but they're still tied into the braids, so they're not going anywhere. Mm. And then when he unbraids and he washes, he gets a week's loss at the, at the one time. And so that, that 500 hairs that he's talking about is a number that I would expect over a week. Yes. Right? If 50 to 100 is the normal rate, then 350 to 700 is the weekly rate. So to lose 500 hairs um, you know, a week if you're braiding the whole of your head would be expected. This also leads us to a, you know, a sort of a, a companion topic, which is about hair extensions. Yes. Right. So when people are using hair extensions, they say, "Oh, I've got a hair extensions in. Is it, you know, is it making my hair loss worse?" Because you know, like when we do the extensions, you know, these hairs fall out. It's exactly the same thing. If you've got hair extensions in, they're wound around your existing hair. And if you leave them in long enough before you take them out to change them, some of the hairs are going to finish their growth cycle well, they and they'll be detached and they'll be stuck into uh, where your so, extension. So the other issue there is that the act of braiding or act of putting the hair extensions in may also expedite the shedding of that hair you know, in a certain number of hairs so as well. So now we're getting into traction alopecia. Correct, yes. Right? So the traction alopecia is very common in um, uh, women uh, who tie their hair back tightly. You know, they're doing ballet when they're a mm -hmm. child or, or they're a teenager and, the, and they do this big tight uh, uh, pull back into a bun. And over time, the, the, the tension reduces the amount of stem cells that are left around the hairs because they're pulled out under tension over time and it yes. just pulls stem cells out with them. So eventually the hairs start to miniaturize. And so uh, typically the traction alopecia occurs where the tension is greatest, which is at the margin here around here. So this is where it happens when you get the traction. Mm -hmm. In men, it's often associated with winding the hair under a turban, yes. for example. So again, the same thing is that if you, over time, putting severe tension onto the hairs, you can cause permanent hair loss because those hairs aren't going to come back. back. So short answer is if you're going to braid, if you're going to use extensions, just make sure they're not tight. Yes. If they're not tight, you're not creating traction alopecia. Yeah. So I think that's the, the two variants there, isn't it? So making sure, you know, understanding that uh, without too much tension on the hair, it would be a normal shedding process and you just may, may see that in a, it may appear more aggravated just to the, the function of it being a period of time between uh, taking them out versus putting those hairs under a great deal of tension and causing perm what can be permanent hair loss if that, uh, if that, 
force is applied to a particular area for a longer Over period, time. period of time. And the other thing to remember, everybody, is that the most amount of hair you have on your head is up until about the age of 25. And then from the age of 25 on, there's a very gradual decline in the number of hairs that will grow as we age, and the shaft diameters come off a little bit as well. And that's just a normal part, part of aging. So uh, if you look at photos of me 40 years ago, I had a much heavier volume in right. my hair than I do now, and I don't really have a hair loss problem. I'm just 40 years older. <laughs> yeah, you've got great hair there. Uh, um, but yeah, no, I think that's uh, that, that's a really good point. We we all, you know, and that is often f commonly forgotten that we all experience a degree of hair, thinning. you know, an age-related thinning of our hair, and that's just through the passage of time. Yes, it's not necessarily something that's. It's kind of this idea that you might have any individual hair follicle might have twenty cycles yes. in it, right? And if your cycle is three years, then you know you might be getting thinner at 60. If your cycle is five years, it might take you 70 or 80 before right. you're noticing the thinning. Um, but um, it, is, it is a gradual loss over time. In some people, it's more evident than others. And of course, then we've got all of the things associated with you know, the hormonal changes in menopause, which yes. is a completely different topic. Perfect. All right. Well, uh, thanks again to the to the uh, person that wrote in and uh, sent through that question. That was a really fascinating question, and it was really good to to tackle that topic. Uh, so please do keep the questions coming in. Thanks again for your support, and we'll see you on the next episode. Thanks, guys. Thanks.